I'm Tao, and I'm a sculptor based in Toronto. So I practice sculpture. Um, I have a self-taught sculptor practice I've been doing for about, I guess, four years now. Mostly figurative, mostly in the, in the realm of like portraiture. I have like a very sort of DIY approach to, um, to construction, I guess, and constructing a figure. Uh, so I like to kind of just work with whatever's available to me. I, I don't know, I think there's just something nice about kind of reworking or giving something life again that kind of has or has had its own life. This is my new portrait that I'm doing. So this is all, pretty much all found stuff. Um, some cool pieces of bark. I guess this is like worms eating it and stuff. Most of my work thematically comes from a feminist background. The portraits that I'm working on, they're mostly exploring African diaspora, black identity. Um, I like to think about the erasure of black Canada uh, within Canadian art. And I like to sort of analyze and deconstruct that by building these portraits out of the landscape. This was for uh, Dord and he's basically my cowboy and he goes on top of my head. So like this is my saddle hat that I made and these little holes go around my ears um, and then he sits on my head. I understand 3D a lot better. I need to be putting my hands on things, I need to be building, I need to feel texture. Those are the things that I'm really attracted to. Sort of the effect of having such um, an action-driven practice is that I don't have a lot of time to sort of second-guess whatever I'm doing and I don't have a lot of time to do research. But because of that, I'm able to sort of really jump into things and have a super honest approach to whatever subject matter I'm dealing with in the work. Hmm. Maybe piano. And then this is my most recent doll that I just finished. She's mostly made out of fabric. She has a skeleton made out of wires in her face and hands and feet. Um, I carve out of plaster and acrylic paint. I mix plaster and acrylic paint together and it becomes this weird, almost clay-like material that I'm able to carve. And then I sort of conjoin all her bits and pieces together with hose clamps. So she's like fully flexible and can do all kinds of weird shit. Um, cause people like to be, you know, people like to be grossed out. I'm a Halloween baby, I was born on Halloween. I don't know if that's why, but I love creepy stuff. I love scary things. I love discomfort. Um, people are okay with temporary discomfort. It's a good point for people to, you know, really quickly become interested and then hopefully kind of get reeled into like a larger, more important theme, like within the work. This is one of my favorite photos, I'm one of those like typical school photo things, but it's of my brother, super grouchy and like this great big line across his forehead. I feel like I have, I guess a lot of, maybe they're not rituals, but I have a lot of things that I do with the work. Well, because I do feel very connected to it. And I feel like everything that I make is a pretty personal reflection of myself. And a lot of it's made from personal objects. Like I take old clothing of mine, earrings, I'll like hide things inside of the sculptures sometimes. Things that are, you know, maybe irrelevant, but, but have some kind of personal, um, I have some kind of personal attachment to, and I'll sacrifice that and put it into the sculpture. Um, Cause it makes them feel more real to me. Like they feel very real to me. This is my other doll who I will be taking home with me. And she just kind of lives in this rocking chair while she's in the studio and she has her own doll so she doesn't get lonely. Guilty pleasure right now. I mean, there are some private things that maybe I shouldn't talk about on camera. I don't think that any of my pleasures are really that guilty, or at least I don't really feel guilty about them.